This is Jim Bean's Devil's Cut, which is where they apparently like squeeze the barrels and get all the whiskey out, and then they sell it to us. When bourbon makers age their whiskey, they put it in new charred American oak barrels and they stick it on shelves for years and then they take it out and they dump it and they bottle that. Realistically, the barrel soaks up a lot of whiskey. And so Jim Beam has decided to harvest that whiskey that is left over in the barrels. Theoretically, that's gonna be really, really strongly flavored whiskey. And then they're gonna blend it with other whiskey and put it into this release. Now I have no idea how they harvest that. I like to think they made some big machine that just squeezes it like a lemon and it all drips out. But realistically, I don't freaking know. If anybody knows how they harvest this, I would love to see that. Call me up, Jim Beam. We'll go, we'll go document how you harvest the whiskey out of these barrels. This guy is released at 90 proof and it runs 20 to $25 and you can get it just about freaking anywhere. If you can't find it, you're not trying. So let's look at the bottle and see what she tells us. Jim Beam Devil's Cut, Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey made with bourbon extracted from the barrel walls. On the back, it just has a government warning. Like they give us very little. On the side, while bourbon ages and the anvil share evaporates, some also remains trapped inside the barrel. This is the devil's cut. We extract this dark and intense liquid from our charred white oak barrel walls and blend it with extra aged bourbon. Jim Bean Devil's Cut is a distinctly bold bourbon filled with rich, intense flavors. And on the other side, quality, genuine bean bourbon extra aged. Extra aged in the heart of Kentucky, Jim Beam Devil's Cut Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey is made for those who take their whiskey seriously. So this apparently is extra aged. What does that mean? I don't freaking know. Like what is extra age? It's straight bourbon whiskey, so it's gonna be aged for a couple of years, but then they age it for longer than that. How much longer? I have no freaking clue. My name is TJ Gamble and this is Bruzel, which is just an elaborate attempt to make my bourbon selection a tax deduction. Let's get right into the review. This is 1000% a gimmick. You've got the, what they call the angel share. That's what evaporates out of the barrels. This is the devil's share, which is what's left in the barrels. But realistically, this is one of those gimmicks I'm into. Like just the thought of that whiskey that's trapped in the barrels and being able to try that, that's pretty fun. So I, I enjoy that, just the thought of that. Now I wish they hadn't have blended it. Like just give me some of that and let's see what that's all about. But we'll give it a try and see what's up. All right, so devil's cut reminds me of a uh, old Charlie Daniels song. The devil went down to Georgia and he was looking for a bourbon to drink and he was in a bind and he was losing his mind and he stopped to take a think. And he saw a bottle of Jim Beam Devil's Cut and he jumped up on a hickory stump and he said, Jim, let me tell you what, I bet you didn't know it, but I'm the devil too. And if you care to take a dare, I'll make a bet with you. Now you make a pretty good bourbon, son, but give the devil his due. I bet a fiddle of gold, once Bruzel puts you in your hole, he's gonna rate you a two. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I kind of made that up on the spot. I made it up right before we went on camera. So I, you know, give me a little credit, give me a little credit. I don't think I'm gonna rate it a two though. I think the devil's a little ambitious on that. Now we're judging this on five different criteria. The first one is going to be the nose, the aroma. Now our rankings tend to skew a little more in the favor of higher proof whiskey. So we'll see how this one holds up at its lower proof point. It smells very much like a Jim Beam. Maybe a little more intensity, a little more of kind of that oaky duddiness. I'm gonna put this right smack dab in the middle of average. Like there's several things going on, but they're not overly complex or pleasant. And of course the next criteria, flavor. A whole lot of Jim Beam. Like it's like Jim Beam and then it just dips. Like it's just all gone. And obviously you expect it to to taste like Jim Beam, it's freaking Jim Beam. Like what would it taste like if not for Jim Beam? I expected a little more going on. I expected a little more interesting flavor and, and it's just kind of that Jim Beam kind of oaky nuttiness is really strong at the start and then it just kind of dips off to nothing. It's not an exceptional whiskey to me. So I'm gonna put this probably at a four. Like it's not bad, but I would say this is, as far as like all of the bourbons we review here, this one's gonna be slightly below average. Better than normal Jim Beam, 
but not as good as a lot of these kind of craft spirits or these limited releases that we have here. So then we move on to complexity. Again, it evolves a little bit, but it's not evolving in a pleasant way. Like I get a ton of flavor up front and that starts to dissipate on the mid palate and then it kind of leaves me with nothing at the end. No off-putting flavors or anything like that, but at best a three on the complexity scale. So then we judge mouthfeel. So what we're looking for here is kind of that viscosity, that thickness, you know, how it really coats the mouth. And you can kind of see on the glass here, it's pretty thin. Like this just runs right back in the glass. And so with mouthfeel, you're getting there, which is not in favor of its low proof. You're not expecting a great mouthfeel from a 90 proof whiskey, although it does happen from time to time. So with this one, again, it's a three. So next is the finish. And the finish is not pleasant. I get a little bit of a sharpness to it, not a ton of flavor. It goes down easy, but it doesn't leave me with anything pleasant. So I'm gonna put that finish at a three at best. And that puts its bruiser score at an 18. Do you think we're a little harsh on Jim Beam Devil's Cut? Have you tried it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments.